In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to receivables. First question, failure to pay the amount due at maturity of a note is A. Lying B. Bad debt C. Dishonoring a note D. Uh, discontinuing a note or E. Describing a note so we'll go through this one more time. Failure to pay the amount due at maturity of a note is A, lying, uh, kind of, because the note we signed is a promissory note. That's the definition of it. So uh, if we don't pay it, then we said we were going to, and we kind of didn't, and we kind of lied. But So I'll keep that now. It doesn't sound like a very technical term, however. B says bad debt. Um, it's not really bad debt. That's when someone is going to pay us for accounts receivable, typically. And then we'd write that off. So we, that could be a reasonable type of answer, but it's not. That usually deals with accounts receivable more than the notes receivable. So I'm gonna cross that out for now. Um, well, I'm gonna cross it out for good. And then the next one says C, dishonoring of a note. Um, that sounds similar to lying. We have a dishonoring of a note. It's so I'm, I'll keep that now. D says discontinuing a note, and E says describing a note so all three of these sound very similar which means that uh, maybe they're trying to play on the fact that uh, these three are uh, are similar in sounding and so that might lead us to think well maybe it's one of those three because they use words that are really similar trying to kind of trick us on those three so if we read through this one more time and try to use the process of elimination if we didn't quite know what this was we could say, well, the failure to pay the amount due at maturity of a note is A says dishonoring, and I mean, A says lying, and uh, that doesn't sound like as technical, and it doesn't line up to these three that sound very, you know, it kind of looks the similar in nature. C says dishonoring, which is kind of similar to lying, but has this, this D sound that's similar to these other two. D says discontinuing, and E says describing a note. So I would think that uh, because these three are similar, it might be one of those three. And because C sounds similar to A, that might be them trying to confuse us on, on those two. So I might be overthinking this. But that might be one way to go through a process of elimination, say, well, C sounds like the best option. It sounds like line, which is similar to A, and it's using the same terminology as, as these other ones that's, that look similar to the same type of word. So I'm going to say it's dishonoring. That's going to be the right answer too. So uh, dishonoring the note basically means that we promised to pay it and we dishonored our promise. We said we wrote a formal note. We said we're going to pay it and we didn't pay it. Therefore dishonored it. Answer C. Full question and answer one more time. Failure to pay the amount due at maturity of a note is C. Dishonoring a note. Next question, which is not true about the allowance for doubtful accounts? A. It is a contra asset account. B. It is used to estimate accounts receivable, accounts receivable that are not collectible. C. It is debited when uncollectible accounts are written off. D. Accounts receivable less the allowance for doubtful accounts shows net receivables or E it is an equity account. So one more time, process of elimination. Which is not true about the allowance for doubtful accounts? A, it's a contra account. Now the, the allowance account is a contra account because what we're doing is we're trying to value the receivables, decide how much we think is uncollectible based on an estimate, then make a contra account, which will kind of counteract that receivable. So that's true. B says it, and therefore not the correct answer, B says, it is used to estimate accounts receivable that are not collectible. And that's in essence what the allowance for doubtful account is. We're trying to value the receivables, see what's not collectible, so that's not it, because it's correct. And then C says, it is debited when uncollectible accounts are written off. Now to figure that one, you might want to actually write the journal entry. If we're going to write off an account, we don't know the, the dollar amount, but we could still uh, write it off and say the debit and the credit if we wrote off an account. We'd say accounts receivable is an asset. It's going down with a credit. So accounts receivable would go down. I'm just going to put $100 in the credit just for to make up a number. And then the debit would go under the allowance method to the allowance account. 
to the allowance, not to bad debt expense. So it would be a debit here to the allowance. So it would be debited when uncollected. That sounds right, which means it's not the correct answer. And then D says uh, accounts receivable less the allowance for doubtful accounts shows net receivables. And that in essence is true. We're saying the receivables is what people owe us. The allowance represents what we think will not be paid based on an estimate. The difference between those two is the net of what we think we will be paid or the net receivable. So we're left with E, which says it is an equity account. And that's not true. It's a contra asset account. It's an asset account that's contra to the norm, meaning that it has a credit balance rather than a debit balance. So answer is E. Once again, question and answer is, which is not true about the allowance for doubtful accounts? E, it is an equity account. Next question. A company or bank that purchases another company's accounts receivable is called A, A, financer, B, AR or accounts receivable purchaser, C, factor, D, receivable security bank, E, pledge E. So once again, we'll go through the, the process of elimination. A company or bank that purchases another company's accounts receivable is called A, and this is one of those terms, I mean, uh, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time to when you go through this, this type of material um, talking about these. This is just a terminology term that we would just have to know uh, in order to get this right or not. There's no real uh, theory involved here. We're just saying what is the term for a company or bank that purchases the accounts receivable of another. And uh, so one, financer. And it's not, they're not really financing the accounts receivable. We know that term uh, to finance something. It's not really to purchase the receivable. B, AR, purchaser. And that describes what's happening. So that could be possible. C says factor. And we may not know exactly what that is. So we could leave that there. D says receivable bank, security bank. It's a receivable security bank. And that sounds kind of generic. So it's probably not that one i'm gonna say that sounds and then e says a pledge e which could possibly be it so this is one of those that you really would just have to kind of know the definition too you might be able to eliminate a few of these and so the, the answer is actually going to be a factor and so that's one again you just have to kind of know the terminology on that one so the question is and answer being a company or bank that purchases another company's accounts receivable is called a c factor